So I now recognize uh, the gentleman from New York, Mr. Jeffries, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for uh, convening this very important hearing. I thank all the witnesses. Uh, and Mr. Mulvaney, it is good to see you. Welcome back to the People's House, uh, even if it is virtual. Uh, Mr. Mulvaney, you ran the Office of Management and Budget for President Trump before becoming his chief of staff. Is that right? Uh, that's correct. I think I ran OMB for two years. I ran it from uh, February of 17 through about uh, December of uh, of, nine, of uh, 18. Is it fair to say that many Republicans only care about the debt and deficits when there's a Democrat in the White House? I think it's fair to say that not as many Republicans care about the debt and deficit as, as I want them to. Uh, I'll, I'll never forget, I was walking down the hallway early in my days in Congress, what we all refer to as the old bulls. I honestly can't remember his name, so I'm not shielding him. Um, and I just got there in the Tea Party wave and he looked at me and says, oh, you're Mulvaney, you're one of those fiscal hawks. And I said, yeah, and he laughed. And he said, yeah, you know, y'all came around a little bit with Newton, and then you left and I was here. You were around a little bit with Reagan, you left and I was here. Now you're here and I'm here, you're gonna leave and I'm still gonna be here. There are Republicans who love spending money as just as much as Democrats do. Um, well, thank you, uh, Mr. Mulvaney. Uh, and I think that's consistent with what you once said, which is my party is very interested in deficits when there is a Democrat in the White House. The worst thing in the whole world is deficits when Barack Obama was the president, then Donald Trump became president and we're a lot less interested as a party. You said that on February 19th, 2020. Now in 2017, Republicans passed uh, the GOP tax scam uh, where eighty-three percent of the benefits went to the wealthiest one percent. Is that correct? Is that was that the official name of the bill? I don't. I don't remember that. Uh, that's the informal name. Okay. Uh, it's an affectionate <laughs> name for uh, a very interesting piece of legislation to subsidize the lifestyles of the rich and shameless. Uh, but in terms of that particular bill, uh, it's estimated that it increased deficits by one point nine trillion dollars over a ten or eleven year period of time. Is that correct? Uh, I, I've not seen that estimate. I'm, what, what are you looking at, Hakeem? I actually came from the Congressional uh, Budget Office. Now, during President Trump's time in office, the national debt rose by approximately $7.8 trillion. Is that correct? Uh, I, again, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but it sounds about, we, we increased the, def, the deficit considerably during the Trump administration, yes. Right, $7.8 trillion. That is a record amount over a four-year period of time. Yet, despite opposing the GOP tax scam and all the other reckless spending that this country was forced to absorb, Democrats in Congress voted uh, to increase the debt ceiling three times because that is the responsible thing to do as leader Steny Hoyer indicated. But it also has become a political weapon often used with great hypocrisy as you yourself eloquently articulated in England several years ago and that's why I believe the responsible thing to do uh, is to move beyond it. Let me uh, ask uh, Dr. Shainer, uh, am I correct that the United States is the only major high income industrialized nation to have a debt limit? Um, I actually don't know the history of the debt limit across countries. I think as um, Representative Hoyer says that Denmark has one, but that it's not binding, but it is very unusual uh, across countries to have this, this kind of weird rule that says you pass money and then you have some other law that inconsistent with what with the other law that you've you passed. And, and what was its intention uh, when it was created? So again, not an economic historian, but from what I understand it was, um, again, as uh, Representative Hoyer said, to allow Treasury more flexibility than they had um, in order to borrow money to keep the country um, rolling. So. And am I correct that that link that limit is simply designed to allow the Department of Treasury basically to pay, pay the bills that Congress has already acquired. It's like, if you were not to do that, you'd be blocking the checking account from paying off the credit card bill uh, that you have already accumulated, true? Exactly. Congress passes something that says Treasury pay this person $100 and then the debt limit says what you can't. Is there any evidence to suggest that the debt limit has ever incentivized a Democratic or Republican controlled Congress to reduce spending. This is particularly uh, apropos given what we saw explode during the Trump years, particularly in 2017 and 2018. 
I think if you look at the history of the debt ceiling, you will find that it has not had any material effect on uh, deficits. Um, Thank you very much. I yield back the balance of my time.